Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I have a special unboxing video and it's, it's kind of an interesting story of how I have this box that I have in front of me and it's from a company called Gold Tone. So I have a gold tone, two gold tone banjoleles, a little gem and also a baritone banjoleli, which is so cool. I really like their products. Um, I've been researching banjos because after, I don't know if you follow my channel, but I've been sent of some banjos in the past to unbox and play, and I never played banjo before in my life. In fact, my husband used to say, that's the one instrument you please don't buy. So it was sent to me, so I did, didn't actually go against what he wanted. But in any case, um, I was looking in the wrong direction. I was doing bluegrass, and while that's a great you know, type of music to play for some people, I didn't click with it. So almost all my banjo videos up until this point have been bluegrass. And then when I got the last banjo sent, and you'll see that video if you go into my channel by Van Gogh, it's an open back banjo. And I just started finger picking and I Googled finger picking the banjo with my fingers because I didn't like those picks to so do that. I felt like they just squeezed my fingers and I just couldn't ever remember all the different roles and stuff. Well, when I discovered that type of playing, I immediately ordered the book by Wayne Erberson. I used him for the bluegrass and it helped me quite a bit. It's called Claw Hammer Banjo for the Complete Ignoramus, or an ignoramus as they might say in the South. But in any case, it's a great and well-written book. Don't let the title fool you. And so I have the bluegrass and now I have two by him <laughs> for Claw Hammer. And Gracie here, she's a year and seven months at the end of this month. She loves claw hammer banjo. She comes right by my side because it, being finger picked, it doesn't have such an abrasive tone. So in any case, let me get back to this. So I had some credits on Amazon because I'm always saving money for things that I buy. And I sold a bunch of instruments. And so hey folks, I'm back. So funny thing happened. I don't know why and how, but the um, camera shut off in the middle of the unboxing. So all you missed was me taking it out of the box and telling you how I was able to buy this instrument. I sold a bunch of instruments and I've been accumulating uh, credit card points on Amazon and I was able to get this really wonderful instrument. I'm not even sure where I was in talking to you about it, so I'll just tell you that uh, there was a problem with the other instrument in that it was sent from a different music store and in shipping it got damaged. And I just wanted to say that Gold Tone was so amazing in helping me to resolve this problem. Um, I put a query on the uh, Facebook Clawhammer Rules Forum. They've been so wonderful in helping me learn Clawhammer on my other um, instruments. And um, they helped me diagnose part of the problem that the heel was not attached to the uh, head correctly and that's why the action was so high. I initially put pictures of the action and so there were many reasons that action can be high but in doing a um, FaceTime uh, with a luthier at Gold Tone, it was shown to me that there was a, uh, the screw was stripped in the heel from a big force that could happen in shipping. So unfortunately, I had to send it back, but Gold Tone was wonderful in sending me a label, and Wayne Rogers, who was the first person on the forum that said, called my company, he owns Gold Tone, um, and they'll take care of you, and it's true, there was no um, you know hold music or waiting, I got someone right away. I spoke to David a number of times, and uh, everybody has been so wonderful there. So I'm, I'm so appreciative of that treatment. And then David even said he would have Nathan look at the new one they were sending me, make sure it was totally perfectly set up. And um, uh, I tell you, I, I can't say enough good things about that because when you get instruments, it's really nice when they can be set up and that takes time and you have to you know, pay money for a luthier to do it, but usually it's worth it because they'll make the action lower, they'll make sure everything is you know, perfectly snug. You know, when things get shipped from different places, things move and shift. And uh, so anyway, without further ado, let's open this baby up. <laughs> Now the bridge is going to be on it. That's how they do it. They don't ship it with it off. And it is on and it looks beautiful. And oh my goodness, look at that action. That's perfect. I could tell already just from eyeballing it. Um, so let's look at this beautiful banjo. 
Um, I love the way it smells. I think it comes from when I was a kid and my dad did a lot of woodworking. So this has a nice smell to it. <laughs> and I believe this is maple and um, all around. And it's got, I think, a rich light. It could be, it could be a rose, but I'm not really sure. I have to look at the specs for the fingerboards. Really pretty. It might be, it's got some tone in it, so it might be actually a wood, like rosewood. I like the darker uh, frets and it's got a little star in the middle really like that it's a renaissance head a, a remo I, th I think it's a remo but it's in any case it's called a renaissance it's got that kind of yellowed old time antique finish to it or look to it it's got a nice armrest that says gold tone right on it and i'll come and show you it's got this fan tail piece it's got a scoop so you could play over here and get a warmer tone i'll show you that up close and it's got like 26 of these brackets, which is pretty amazing. And two rods, two truss uh, uh, coordinator rods, I guess they're called. And one of one of the then and also a truss rod because some of the banjos don't have truss rods for adjustment of the neck. And they've now upgraded to planetary uh, tuners. They're kind of like friction and geared or something. They're maybe a hybrid but they're supposed to be really accurate. I noticed the other ones used to have guitar tuners, so these are called planetary. And let's take a look up front. Wow, look at that. And it's pretty bright out here, so you can't really see the kind of antique finish, but I can see it from my eyes. It's really nice. Nicely made, the, the woodwork, the craftsmanship, smooth, it's got binding, so there are no sharp fret edges or anything like that. Here's the star I was telling you about. It's got these perlite um, tuners all around, not just on the fifth one. Look at that, it's beautiful. And you can see the heel is perfectly attached. Now I know what to look for. I, I didn't know these things, so I've definitely become educated. Beautiful, wow. There's a fit. This tailpiece, I was watching some different videos and before I uh, really decided this was the one, I won't mention another round that I was looking at and they compared the difference between this, at this price point and other higher ex end banjos um, from another company that didn't have some of these appointments and I was sold and I thought the tone was much warmer too. The 12 inch makes it a little more warm sounding but also you know they have other things they have this special bridge I don't know there's like a little scoop in it I think there's a name for this type of bridge and this can be switched out with other tail pieces so it's not like a, an odd one you could switch it out if you wanted although I think it's very pretty and this one has like I said 26 of these um, hooks which help with this uh, tension of the head where some other ones only have like 16 This one has that. Oh, this is the scoop. I was telling you about See right there no fret so you can kind of play there and And now it has these you know upgraded Tuners which is so wonderful So I'm gonna tune her up. I'm gonna put it in, o in double D tuning because that's what I've been learning with a book by Wayne Eberson. I got his bluegrass book, but now I have his Clawhammer book because I never realized there was this such a thing existed. So I've been totally obsessed. I've been playing for five weeks. At some point I'll put, you may have the videos before or after this video where I show my progress. And I really have learned a lot in these five weeks. So let's just, it's actually, there. It's in, it, they tuned it to G, but I'm gonna tune it to double C. And I'll be right back and I'll share with you a few tunes that I'm learning and how I'm learning how to play. Okay, I tuned her up. It really tunes well. And I'm sure the strings still have to stretch, you know? So that's the double C tuning. Um, double C tuning, there is open G, there are a lot of tunings. I did play open G in the bluegrass, but for double C, I decided to follow the book, as I said. And this is Clawhammer, 
banjo for the complete ignoramus, and I'm going to play through a little of the medley of the songs that I've been working on and the techniques that I've been trying to do these past five weeks. A lot of it has to do with getting the right hand in the shape of the claw, because I was I'm a guitar player, so I was playing picking up. It's really down with the nail, so I learned so much. So this is called Old Molly Hair. some of it memorized but for the sake of the video let's go with the tab <laughs> was just called um, the claw hammer and that's what it sounds like when you play it's a bum ditty so it's like bum ditty, bum ditty. my watch keeps hitting that string the open string so what you're doing is I'm using my middle fingernail and it's claw hammer that's what I'm doing with this song, but you can also add other things which I'm learning. There is something called double thumbing, which is um, if you have single notes, like where, I'll show you where the single notes are. So this is the drop thumb. That was all drop thumb. I mean, excuse me, that was all just your claw hammer. And then when you have the single notes, you can do this. using the thumb again just for the single notes you're breaking up the quarter note into two two eighth notes and you can throw that in as you like you know to decorate the piece you don't want to do all of you know just claw hammer and all just um, you know uh, double thumbing and I'm also trying to learn the drop thumb which has been a little you know trickier for me and that is where on the normal claw hammer you would go Right? You actually bring the thumb down. That's why it's called drop thumb. So it's. So you play it like this. So on that one, I also did the. On that one, I also did the um, double thumb on those quarter notes so much to learn but it's so much fun so I'm gonna play another song this is one of my favorite songs that I'm learning I'm trying to teach myself all the verses there are uh, only four in this particular song but some of these old-time songs have like ten verses this one's called Old Blue I really like this one <laughs> sing it does help with the rhythm 
and learning all the proper place for the notes. Um, I also would like to learn to do the drop thumb and the double thumb on this, but I'm taking it you know, slowly so that I can um, really learn correctly since I don't have a private teacher or anything. So, yeah. This is called Cumberland Mountain Deer Chase. Double C, as I said, there's the, the other tunings that he talks about are uh, G tuning, which is the standard one that I knew about, the uh, bluegrass or open G tuning, G modal tuning, D modal tuning, F tuning, and uh, I guess he has waltzes and all different tunes. So yeah, there are a lot of tunings of the banjo. I didn't know that either. Lots of information and different songs. So let's see. Oh, I like this one too. And this is called Fall on My Knees. <laughs> This one has lyrics. This one's called Sugar Hill. Thank you. 
I just love this style of like. You should you go I love you. I love you. I love you. with the bluegrass and I tried that but I didn't really attempt it very often only when I had to unbox a video because it just didn't didn't gel with me but this gels with me yes. I want to learn all those techniques I just played the hammer the regular hammers the regular claw hammer but I could do <laughs> watching the videos on how to do this drop filming. with it. But I love that bass. Oh, this is fun. This is, this is a good way to spend some time when you're not working and doing all the things you have to do. I like that. This one I've played. I don't know if I remember it. that that was right but the action was literally so much higher uh, I I'll show you a picture I'll put it in the screen and you'll see the difference and what was wrong with the heel and so thank you Nathan the luthier who did FaceTime with me and uh, you know I put the this tripod that my dad made me before he passed years ago for my phone and put it with the the uh, banjo like this and he guided me into what to do and how to check it. I don't think it would have been diagnosed otherwise. And, uh, you know, who knows? I may have just, just kind of had bad taste in my mouth, thought, oh, the action's so high. But now I realize there was something wrong. And boy, I tell you, I see videos on how, when they're shipping, how they throw things around. But I can tell you right now, this was packed really solidly. The video went off, but they had like a, another piece of like, um, styrofoam holding it with tape so that it wouldn't move around and you know and the box itself was a thicker box an outer box so um, they take a lot of care uh, to send it out right this came this one came from gold tone company so wow and what a company and what an instrument so thanks so much for watching and um, I think I can grow many years playing this banjo in my banjo skills and I hope to continue for a very long time. I think 
Gracie likes it too. Take care, everybody.